Hey everyone, this is Daryl Christopher. It's been a month since I posted a video, but I kind of had to have separated myself from everyone so that I can move forward with my career, with the governance model that I want to develop for the family, and also to finish the novel. Now, if I really did make it real, I did set certain events in motion and it's up to me to finish that novel and as my artistic revenge for writing very less than satisfactory books to begin what was my writing journey this would be my revenge of no one being hurt but by delivering satisfaction in terms of writing something now that I understand completely as someone who's in a different stage of life with different priorities. An older person who's made mistakes, who's learned from it, who's field tested. Now, I did two major things which surprisingly felt awful for how good they're going to make my life. Um, in other videos that you probably haven't seen yet because I and I got my loan approved to finally get rid of my debt it's gonna be strict it's gonna be tough I'm gonna have to make every dollar count like a bullet does in The Walking Dead where in five years to pay off what I owe it's going to be a lot of work, but ultimately, credit, as they taught us in the 80s, turned out not to be as cool and glamorous as they made it to be back when we were kids. Uh, I'm glad to be rid of it, and I'm glad to get rid of the debt. It was one of the things that I had to do for one of my concerns, but... Uh, I think things are going to work out for the better. I mean, uh, when you're more concerned with how you're going to allocate resources and exceed expectations at work and pay down that debt until it's gone in a faster time frame than five years, then. I have my work set out for me, but uh, I know I came off very awfully. Sometimes my behavior can be abhorrent, and I apologize for that. But uh, I've had a month to separate myself from everyone and focus on me, and I've made the most of it in terms of getting everything done. And so. The big things are over, and believe me, I have never had as much anxiety as when I knew that when they came through, when they finally were things that were happening. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe because part of me wanted me to be feeling bad in some way or having that issue to deal with. At least this way it's going to be over. So. I feel once I get into the payments, which uh, will begin next month, and just get used to hoarding money just in case I want to really, really avoid having to ask anyone for money to make these payments, but uh, if I was learning to live cheap before, then I'm going to be really living on a budget from now on in order to get this done. It's what I have to do. So, as a citizen of Earth, that's fine with me. And as a citizen of the Dominion, it's what I have to do. It's a better way to go. I'd rather go this way than declare bankruptcy. I got myself into trouble, and uh, I don't want to say any more than I said on my Instagram account, but uh, I'm really glad that's finally going to be dealt with. Maybe. Maybe I was hiding that problem from myself because it was very shameful, but uh, I think it's like anything else. If you do something about it, then I hopefully 
we'll have everyone wishing me well on that front. And, uh, again, I'm not turning to the dark side like I said I was, even though that is the most popular day probably on the internet where I doomed the species and people were called over it. So, anyways, I made this video in spite of my injury. I had a little bit of burn on my nose. And so you're going to see me like this for a second. And I'm not one of those narcissistic people that hides from the world for a few weeks if they have some injury to their face. Like, this is it. It's not exactly great, but I, you know, in terms of part of all the videos that I'm trying to put together, it's a moment in time, so I'm fine. And it's closing in on Canada today. So this is my first episode of Making It Real, where I talk about normal life, life as someone who knows how to alter reality, and the ability to evolve, to exist as the entirety of all that is. To know what it is, to be all existence, all of everything, all that is divine, and have a different perspective. I think that in time, I don't think right now, I think people right now feel that they need a force more powerful than them, but we have been the most powerful individually and as a species all along. So, you know, think of what's coming as good things. Anyways, I also put this together because I wanted to show you where I'm at in my in my reading and that's that's part of what I do. I believe that we have the building blocks, everything that we need to find in this life for for the afterlife. And so in order to create that existence, we have to experience and accumulate as much data as possible in terms of everything this culture has to offer. So that's what keeps me going and what I read helps me build the existence to come. And that's something I'm going to do is this book is going to go above and beyond. I, I'm thinking of changing the title, but this is how I've been spending my time when I haven't been writing. I've been reading every chance I get, and sometimes I'm so tired that I work, I come home, I sleep, and then I read a little bit during my lunch and break at work, and maybe for a couple hours when I get home, depending on how it goes, but usually I'm tired out, like uh, perhaps it's the heat this summer, perhaps with being older, but uh, you know, this is what I stayed up for last night, because this is my day off, I don't have to work until tomorrow, so, oh, when I was younger, I would be at the club all night. Now it's like I'm reading all night. So aside from watching a little bit of Fallen Skies, this is what I've been working on all night. This pile here that I'll show you in a second of the comic books are all the ones that I've read in the last little while. And I'm going to present them to you because they're not new comic book day kind of comics they're what i've read for this moment in time for this place and you know in terms of building the afterlife i mean there's no better investment than comic books especially if you want to explore differing abilities that one could possess everybody again has the ability to evolve to become the divine and everybody has the ability to alter reality it's just choosing to do so for the right reasons, the good reasons, and to avoid the ones that cause harm. So, anyways, let me present to you now. You've seen enough of my face and my injury, but you know I'm well, and I wish you well, everyone. I will eventually reconnect with humanity, but for the moment, I remain apart. Here for you now are what I'm reading in terms of novels, comic books, and compilations. 
um, in terms of graphic novels and other works. So I'll present that to you. I'll try to hold this as steady as I can because uh, it's been a long night of reading, but I can tell you that I am at page 316 in Star Wars Republic Commando True Colors. Okay. In the Hunger Games Mockingjay, I'm at page 188. In Star Trek Tales of the Dominion War, I'm around page 130. As you can see here, I'm almost finished the uh, Ultimate Collection for Emma Frost. Very awesome stuff. Okay. I also started reading the ultimate version of the Fantastic Four, Volume 3, End Zone. And this is one that I've been reading at home because it's a nice addition. I don't want to get it uh, a little worn like my Emma Frost one, although I've loved the read and it was worth it. I have the uh, Justice League. Dark Side War, Power of the Gods. So far into this read, I have to say that it's almost like Charles Xavier is Batman with the viciousness of Wolverine. So I don't know what that tells you, but that's what I've been reading so far. In terms of the Ultimate Fantastic Four end zone, they're just about to go and uh, travel to the uh, what I suppose the ultimate universe calls the negative zone so it's a little different I'm learning a lot about the ultimate universe that was this is an actual interesting book because it explores the uh, the lives of elite clones and what they are they were doing for themselves and what conditions they were under from their point of view is great read in terms of learning the history of the Clone Wars from another perspective other than the Jedi this is getting to be really good uh, looks like I'm about 40% of the way in uh, have to say the books as always way better than the movies although the movies are pretty good but uh, I really respect Suzanne Collins. I think her writing is somehow simplistic yet complex, which is what I try and strive for myself in many ways. So I really enjoyed the read there. And in terms of this, this is interesting stuff. Tales of the Dominion War from not just the Deep Space Nine perspective as as shown on the series and Emma Frost I really enjoyed reading the compilation of her origins from her upbringing it's uh, she was a character that was kind of introduced to me when she was completely who she was in the zone with that and unstoppable and uh, Everybody is a little bit awkward and not quite there when 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 we were young, I suppose. Now, in terms of comic books, what I've been reading is uh, I got through the uh, Alpha One edition of Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill, Avengers. This is where it's it's almost like a statement where people get imprisoned into a form of behavior modification where they're altered to become good people and this is what happens when the prisoners figure it out and I don't know what it is but is a representation of 1950s America really what people want anymore I think we look upon that just upon 
just as commercialized as the time we live in now, if not more. And the only difference was, is that it was just complete universal conformity. And I think everybody wanted those simple things. Maybe sometimes we don't need life to be exciting all the time. I mean, if we worry about things like our pension contributions or making payments and regular normal life things, then, uh, you know, I think we just don't have that, you know, like in terms of seeing that as anything real, because I guess the world that we live in now is one where certainly the economy is struggling. We're not going to ever be able to retire. If we do get to an older age, we hopefully will be working in things that we can certainly tolerate more for as older individuals. But at the same time, too, we're also looking for technologies to uh, revitalize and re rejuvenate our youth. So it's a different world for us, you know, but at the same time, too, I know I'm a little bit late to the game, but uh, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be actually increasing the amount that we're putting towards our retirement, which is a good thing. So, um, you know, that's something that's uh, really important because it's the difference between, you know, being able to live comfortably, maybe have an extra job that is, is one you can do for, for your age. What, after the age of retirement or be able to make successful the businesses you developed on your own you worked on on the weekend when you're away from your regular job that paid the bills so i don't know there's a lot to think about but i think the world is more realistic to people and believable when it's flawed when it's too cookie cutter picture perfect it's no wonder what it would all go wrong it was like almost like that statement in the matrix that where they made the first matrix a, a paradise and no one accepted it. So kind of like the same thing there with the uh, the standoff. It's very interesting because the only other time we've really seen things about behavior modification in comics, I guess, I guess for me personally was like the uh, original Squadron Supreme miniseries and uh, seeing it on Babylon 5 where they would... Um, how they would uh, behavior modify people in terms of uh, meeting out justice. I, I, th I certainly think that's a lot better in some ways. Some ways not, but I think that's a lot better than sticking someone in a cell for 20, 30 years where they have nothing to do but be penitent, but both we suffer because we take them out of society when if they could be altered to be a good person, they could contribute to our society. And at the same time, it would be people that, you know, we, we would want people to become in terms of, uh, we, we pay a huge cost to keep people away from other people and, and, and barred the freedom of movement through the jails and prisons we have so I think in a lot of ways that would be a lot better but maybe we have to get there in terms of our understanding of what justice is and the technological age of the 21st century another read that I got through was issue number one at C3PO okay this has been pretty good uh, issue 57 of Star Trek we have original Spock. It's been great to see him back. Another great series here is Symmetry. This is why I've been working over time in terms of developing the belief system that will be the official religion of the government of Earth in the year 2173. So, but it sort of correlates with that, though, where, you know, it's a very interesting uh, read in terms of what is the ultimate human society and what is the ultimate way to be. 
and a lot of questions about conformity and how society as a whole works. So I've enjoyed the read. I give it about eight and a half out of ten. Of course, Star Wars, I can't say no to that. This has been a pretty good series in terms of getting the Klingons going back at a time when they had some real animosity with the Federation even though it is the uh, G.G. Abrams crew. I've really enjoyed the start of this. This is interesting. Now, I finally got through season six of The Walking Dead for the series. And of course, everybody had to spoil it for me and let me know it was the dad from Supernatural. But, uh, I can understand those moments where you just see Rick freaking out going, there's no way I can get out of this. What the hell am I going to do? And he's like, I have to do something. And he's just like, freaking. That was an intense episode. And I also got through the first seven episodes of Fear the Walking Dead. Different vibe, but there's a lot of deep thought in that show and I really enjoy it a lot. So... In terms of the new Walking Dead, all I can say is I like where the story's going. It seems like the, the action's heating up uh, again after a lull. Another great series, we have uh, Darth Vader, issue number 17. So you can tell I'm a ways back. These are all the comics that I have in my backlog. Aside from the ones that got me back into comics 10 years ago. So I have all this to read, but in about a week, this is what I got through. This was the Omega issue of uh, Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill. The Omega issue. Yet another Star Wars. This guy I really liked in the, uh, the movies a lot, Poe. So, of course, I could not say no to this. I mean... It's it's not the most original of stories, but I think it it speaks a lot to the character. So I give it I give it an eight, barely there eight out of ten. But uh, I've enjoyed it. I like Poe. Of course, more Darth Vader. Now this was a series that kind of mixed together elements of the Stand with. Um, The Sandman from like uh, Neil Gaiman. So it was an interesting read. I got this as one of uh, the compilations that I picked up at Comic Con. You'll be seeing those videos once they're posted. Oh man, how many times has Adam Warlock been killed off? Then he comes back to life. Then he's killed off again. Then he comes back to life. Is, is this. Is this just another series that begins where it goes all the way until he's dead again and then they bring him back? Or, But I like it and I like the fact that they, uh, he, uh, he makes a visit to the, uh, you know, 1960s era style Avengers. This series ended with a real interesting uh, cliffhanger. Now, uh, after everything that happened, we find out who set off the bomb and that they're not the only ones on Venus, as they see. For who paid the bomber? It looks like they've been there for a while and are good to go for a long time. So very cool stuff. Venus issue 404. Now, here's a series that one of the few toys that if you mention this to other people, they would have no idea what you're talking about. Yet, if you were a child of the 70s and 80s, you probably either bought the toys or you were into the Marvel comic. So this is a great reboot of the Micronauts. And finally, some real awesomeness here. We have issue four 
of monstrous i give this series a nine and a half out of ten it's like modern artists that are creating stuff here that is right up there with the enlightenment and renaissance level of artistic quality this is a fantastic series i even wrote them a letter because i like this series so much so that's where i'm at in terms of reading and then this is uh making it real for june 29th 2016. anyways everyone i'll be back i just have a lot of things to work on but uh you know, in terms of having a day off to just read and take in as much art and culture and beauty as I possibly can. I have to say it's a good day. So I did promise I'd make one YouTube video today. So this is it.